Hey, Deacon. Well, welcome to the man cave again. We're going to do some work today. And so, we do work on the bikes, right? we got to pull the vet out, create room for them. So let's see what we got. We got this little package gratis from uh, Nikolai uh, Miletic in Belgrade, Serbia. Thank you very much, Nikola. All right, so let's see what we got here. Let's set this up here. like we got uh, extension plate for the KTM 690. That's that guy over there. Uh, Enduro luggage rack, a KTM 690 rear brake cylinder protection, and a KTM 690 hill guards. So we'll mount those up. But also, in the process, we'll do, I'll probably do three videos on that. That'll give Nicola a little bit more press. Is um, after Todd got done riding my 500 on the last video you saw, uh, turns out I've got a flat tire. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get a new inner tube and fix that guy. So, one thing I do have though, is I do have parts for the 690. So let's see what they look like. It's always very exciting. Well, that's kind of nice. He's got the, the boxes all marked. Here's one that says extension plate. Another flat box that says heel guard and rear brake cylinder. So let's start with the extension plate. Pretty good package there, Nicola. So Here's what we got. Uh, the way I understand it, let's go over here. I had bought this rear rack from Nicola, Nicola, um, and it's been so far. It's been working out really well. But evidently, if you want to uh, do something like add a some additional luggage, or you know, a a, um, a um, oops. sorry guys. To rearrange this here tripod on my camera. There you go. Okay, so if you want to add a like one of those gas canisters on here. Then you need this. And maybe it, and it increases the surface area. Um, You'll have to go to the website. It's uh, uh, p e r u n moto dot com. So it comes with this. Uh, looks like about a three millimeter. Uh, black anodized aluminum piece, probably uh, 6061 T6. 
That'd be aircraft grade. I assume that's what he's using. Be kind of silly to do something not as strong. So far I've done uh, quite a few miles with his rack on and I even fell down uh, a couple down times and um, my buddies were able to grab hold of the side here and lift me out, uh, help get the bike up with no problems and you know because this this particular area replaces the um, the handles that are on the 690. So it looks like we've got uh, mounting holes that are going to line up with these mounting holes and appears this thing gets mounted just like this. Sweet. So that gives us a bigger surface area if we're going to put some sort of bag on there. Comes with four screws that have a Looks like a four millimeter Allen, and always good to have on a race bike or any kind of bike is these Loctite nylocks, um, vibration precinct uh, nuts. So you see, when we get this thing positioned, right now you see these little slots in here. They're going to line up exactly with these slots when we put them on. And um, this is pretty cool, pretty simple. Uh, there's two holes in here on the existing rack that you, when you buy it, I guess that are used to mount this uh, block of something that has this quick release uh, gasoline tank on it. I haven't used that before. I have kind of a simpler method for carrying extra fuel that I don't have to keep carrying the same big piece of plastic. So we're assuming we got the four waters or here. So let's go in here, take a run to the toolbox, take a look and see what else is going on here. Okay. Well, we need a uh, this uh, this guy has a metric, so it'll cover everything. And the wrench we need is what appears to be a six millimeter. So yes, there it is. We have it. All we need. It's a nice warm day here in Colorado. Okay, so I guess typical we'll put the flat washer underneath it. lock washers. I'm sure this is a whole lot easier to put on when you don't have the the bike or the, the existing rack on. See, just like that. Washer and lock washer or lock nut. Put that up till it starts getting some bite on it. Put this guy on. Looks uh, really straightforward. I mean, this stuff is all. Um, I'm assuming it's it's a uh, laser cut or it's a uh, water cut. So it's everything is right on the money. I'd like to ask him what kind of CAD system that he uses, if he uses Pro-E or, um, or SolidWorks. I'm proficient in both, back when I was a mechanical engineer. And I have SolidWorks at home. I use Pro-E at work to design optical disk drives. And, well, actually I did an optical, the optical disk drives I used AutoCAD um, back Long time ago, switched to Pro E, Pro Engineer, uh, 3D modeling. Man, me and this washer are not getting along. Let's come at it from a different way. 
Let's go over here and take a look this way. Get a different view. Yeah, how's that? You like that, guys? All right. Just go underneath it. Tip my wrench. Choose the right hex wrench. That appears to be it. Tighten that sucker down. And because it's a nylock, you're not going to have to worry about this thing coming loose once you get it going. You know, in all my videos, you hardly ever get to see me, so this is a good chance to see what I look like. I know my voice sounds a lot younger than my actual age. It's 95 degrees out, so I haven't started sweating like a pig yet. Alright, that's all there is to it. That was pretty quick, don't you think? Okay, see it's nice. Uh, everything lines up perfect. The existing slots that you'd run your straps through are still there. We have even more now to choose from. And although you can choose to uh, um, use whatever that thingamajig, some sort of standardized thing that they use. Um, we'll grab some tie downs here. And here's a little, what we have in the United States, and I guess in Europe you might have the same thing, but uh, it's going to make this platform so much easier to use. And I'm kind of messing with your head a little bit. I'm just kind of putting this on rudimentary. So, so you can mount things like this on. If you want to take yourself a gallon worth of coffee along with you on your trip, this is a really good idea. So that's a little traveler box. And uh, I probably need to find some other strap downs to get a little bit more tension. Generally with these, I'm, I have to actually go down to the fender. Or go under it like this. Put a little bit more tension on it. Well, this is interesting. Look at this. I guess the last time I fell down, I actually tweaked my little uh, one of the slots. Well, that's kind of not good. Anyway, see how nice and sturdy that is? Gives more surface area. So, let me see if I can tweak this back out without breaking it. I just use a little wrench. It is aluminum, so it's going to be pretty much a ductile. So, hold on. So, Nicola would probably be interested in knowing about this. Uh, look at my video where I'm going up Hancock Pass to St. Elmo. And... That's when I fell down with this. I don't believe I've fallen down since then. And it was really rocky, so it probably hit a rock. I mean, the odds of this happening, good grief. I mean, that is like, what's, what's the odds of it? this little guy getting hit by a rock? All right, see that? Good as new. I think I can live with that. Nice little tie downs. You know, I've got this uh, Wolfman saddlebags on here. 
And the next thing that Nicola sent me is something that's going to make tying this guy down so much easier. All right, so we'll turn this off. And we'll go back to the next, um, what the next video is going to be. Yeah, so I think that bent when I was going up Han Hancock Pass in St. Elmo, Colorado. All right, turning off.